Hi there. Well, uh, 3D beer goggles here with the first uh, programming uh, Arduino project I've done in ages. Uh, it's not what you're looking at. That's just a, a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe tube amp. We've got twin 6L6s and some nice off-the-shelf. These are a kit, uh, Bias Scout probes. These are kind of nice for doing current measurements because they give us current and voltage. There's a set of 1% resistors for the uh, that provide a voltage divider that take your you know 400 odd volts and turns it into a nice small number like 45 millivolts. And, but we follow now. Normally you'd use uh, that with a multimeter, and I got tired of doing that, so I built this. It's about the same size as one multimeter. Now if you're monitoring two tubes, you'd need two multimeters to do it kind of quickly. And then you still have to switch back and forth between the red and the white to get your voltage and then your plate current and then back and forth to to work out uh, exactly how many watts you're doing. Because usually it would be me with two, if I'm doing a, a bake-in test, I'd be doing two multimeters plus a website, you know, punching a web form in to keep track of the bias current and our target value. So now this kind of does it all in one. So when it first turns on, it can run off uh, an internal 9 volt or right now I'm running it off a, nine, a USB adapter. But uh, we get an option to select our tube. You can kind of expand this. If I put all the popular, common tubes I encounter on a daily basis, on a, on a daily basis in. So in this case, we have uh, also well, you might note multiple variations of 6L6 family tubes, including the originals, which are lower wattage than uh, the GCs that are more common. So we're using a GC series. So we'll open that up. Now the top row, of course, our tube. Second row is uh, at the top here, that's 100% wattage of that tube is 30 watts, and then we have 50, 60, and 70 common biasing intervals. Then A and B is uh, our two probes inputs. Measure gives us, a uh, within roughly 1%, the uh, plate voltage, the, ca the current going through the cathode, our total calculated wattage for that, uh, percentage relative to the max rating on the tube, and the uh, delta, the difference between the two tubes, just to keep an eye on whether or not uh, they're running completely out of whack at a, at a glance. But there it is. It's uh, pretty simple hardware internally. It's uh, an, Ar an Arduino Nano uh, running uh, with an, a um, pretty high resolution, I think it's a 16-bit uh, ADC board that's four channels, so it's just enough. We're not doing any differential measurement on here. There's not a whole lot of input protection, so this is something you really want to uh, you want to hook this up uh, when the amp is turned off. You also want to hook it up once you're sure that the amp doesn't have any significant problems. I mean, the shunts should, in theory, protect it from most weird corner cases. I think the biggest issue is that uh, the two probes are sharing a ground. Uh, that's also why I'm running this through an AC adapter that does not have a ground pin on it. I, just your, your regular old, it's an Apple thing. I don't like to plug this into a computer while it's plugged into hardware. I don't want to worry about a ground loop occurring. It's kind of not really common to, know, to worry about, but it could happen. Uh, so there's not a lot of input protection designed into this, i.e. next to none. Uh, I've been kind of thinking of some designs I could maybe do to uh, protect these inputs, but mm, so far being careful has paid off. But uh, yeah, in an in amp, if you have a uh, design where you have any doubts about the condition of the circuit, you might want to try just testing one tube at a time first to make sure that each tube is actually working properly and wired in. Because I did have one case where a uh, one tube had was missing a ground connection in the amp, and it was actually getting its ground connection through the tester, which was fine. Uh, it was only a little, you know, it's not a lot of current. And the, the tester's wiring handled that just fine because it's going through actual wiring uh, on the banana plugs on the front end cap here. See, I kind of crammed them all in there. Uh, but it was a weird scenario where I was seeing the numbers here were, were acting a little weird. And then when I unplugged one, suddenly the other tube st shut off. So that was a big hint. So it's something you should check for. But uh, yeah, other than that, you just want to make sure that your the whatever amp design you're using is one where it's not going to get upset at, uh, at the two tubes under test having their cathodes tied together. Uh, if they are, just test one at a time. I mean, this still saves you a lot of, a lot of time in messing around. Uh, it gives you a direct readout. You don't have to uh, mess around with uh, too much math. Just pick out your tube, take your measurements, and uh, you can see it actually adjusts fairly fast. If we're going to put the uh, tr trim pot adjust. So let's just say, let's say we want to adjust this to, uh, let's say, 60% dissipation. We can actually 
just tweak her a little. These tubes aren't perfectly matched, but they're pretty close. There we go. And then, uh, because the tester doesn't isn't consuming any battery power, I can leave this for 10 or 15 minutes. Make sure that it's steady and stable, and then uh, if she's all good to go, take it all and let it cool off. But anyway, either way, that's uh, that is the uh, Arduino powered tube bias tester. Hopefully. Uh, some some better ideas and, and revisions, especially I'd like to at some point rewrite the software so it it doesn't uh, it, it rewrites it all kind of in a very it doesn't really uh, update the variables and flash the screen at once it just kind of updates everything a little bit more ad hoc so you can see a little bit of sweeping on the screen caused by that. But uh, other than that, maybe some uh, updated electronics. I would love it. I would love it if I could um, perhaps be a little bit more clever about how it's doing the measurement. Um, if I could find an, an ADC that had that ran uh, that ran on I squared C, because it's all running on I squared C interface along with the screen, uh, if I could find an ADC that could do differential measurement that had some pretty robust um, high voltage tolerance on the inputs to kind of cover for any mistakes that may happen, uh, that would be great. Uh, at that point, I think I'm basically looking at a programmable mu uh, multimeter. So, <laughs> if anyone has heard of anything like that, uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment and. Maybe someday we can make a better version of this, but I did find uh, one other version of this uh, idea, only one other, which was someone who built this for a CompSci project. I will try to dig up a link to it. I used, um, I, I did I did take their code for what, it only measured one probe and it used the Arduino's internal ADC, which uh, I found wasn't really good enough for my needs. The internal ADC's uh, resolution was very, very poor. Um, you know, give or take, three, you know, half a milliamp or so, and there's like a lot of uncertainty to that. So this one's actually measuring uh, way higher resolution than needed. This actually has a 16, this is a 15-bit signed integer uh, with a, uh, a full-scale measurement range of a 255 millivolts. Full-scale at, so yeah, we got a lot of resolution to work with, probably more than, way more than we need, but uh, I kind of wanted to go more overkill than, than, than under the job, and it was not terrifically expensive. But uh, I did use, uh, I started with hit, uh, with that project's code to get an idea about, uh, to get a kind of a, an idea for a menu system format. And I think there is a little bit of, of his code in this thing uh, that he released on GitHub, as I recall. But uh, I'll try to dig it up and find uh, find that fellow's name because he did he did some nice work on that. It was a nice uh, project. But since I I do kind of a, I do kind of run a repair bench here. Uh, I'm kind of doing this work fairly often, and I wanted something with a little bit more repeatability, and especially I wanted something that could do two channels. But yeah, there it is. It's a it's a little bit of a babble, but you get to see a bit of it in action, and it was a no small amount of work. I hadn't done any uh, real programming work in uh, quite a few years, so it was uh, fun building a building a system for this and getting a handle on how Arduino worked. First time I felt motivated to work on an Arduino in ages. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, leave a comment if you have any ideas for how this could be improved or things that uh, you think would be a good idea to do with it.